Hey guys, it's CG Crafted here with a top 10 list. Okay guys, this is a hard video to make. The 2.81 is supposed to be a minor update, but it has so many new functions that it's hard to pick the worst ones. Keep in mind that this video is obviously based on my opinion, and you might find uh, some other functions better. Okay, let's see. Remesh. Yes, that's right. This lets you remesh your object easily when you are sculpting. And the best thing is, this can create an all-quad topology. You sculpt in high resolution using Dynotopo, which uh, creates triangles, then you just smash the remesh button and create quads. But probably the best thing the remesh function can do is saving you from this nightmare inducing little body I created, as smooth shading didn't help. New file browser. This file browser is beautiful. It's floating in a separate window, which is a good new function, but this isn't the only new feature you will love. It has an updated design, icons take up less place, they are stacked under these little menus, which is awesome. The file name bar is on the bottom now, like on your default Windows file browser. Back to the stacked menus, they aren't just stacked, but have new abilities. For example, there are multiple icon sizes you can choose from. Outliner improvement. One of my favorite changes is the new outliner that was lagging behind compared to the advancements in Blender 2.8. The most annoying and weirdest thing was the fact that it wasn't possible to select an object through the outliner by clicking, you had to right click and select things. Now this is gone and it's super easy to select objects uh, through the outliner. While clicking hold shift to select a stack of new objects, hold ctrl if you want to select new objects one by one, or use ctrl shift click to select a stack of objects without deselecting your previous stack. How cool! This is a definitive favorite of mine. Filter option for hidden objects. This is a small but powerful addition that I really like. The option to see all your hidden objects was previously not there. You could see only the visible objects but not the hidden ones. When you have hundreds of objects and keep hiding a lot of them as if your mom would suddenly burst into your room and judge your models, it's easy to get tangled in this mess, not knowing what object is what without manually unhiding them. Now with the help of this little icon you can see all the hidden objects or rename them all without unhiding them. New original stamping functions or what I like to call this, the kill my most popular video called why you will love the 3D cursor. What you could do with your 3D cursor friend can be done without him now. We can ignore this little 3D cursor more frequently. From the options menu from the right corner, select origins and you can move the origins directly. Combined with the, all the new stepping functions, it's easier than ever to move origins. By the way, to enable snapping temporarily without pressing the icon like me, just hold control while moving the object. Batch rename. What is going on here, guys? I used an old batch rename add-on ages ago that was supposed to become paid in the future, and I think not that 2.81 just ended the poor developer's career right here. This is a very handy new feature, which helps organizing your uh, scene a lot better. Especially when you have hundreds of objects. This is a recurring theme for me. You can imagine how many freaking objects my scenes usually have. I mean, I'm close to getting PTSD. I have crazily big scenes. By the way, this function works by pressing Ctrl F2. Mirroring on every axis. Forget X when Z and Y are waiting for you. That's how to summarize this new function. This might make you want to use the mirror modifier less in the future. This is also great for character creation. Poly build. If you want to more control over retopology, then this is the tool for you. If you click on stuff, it will extrude. If you click elsewhere, it won't extrude. Simple as that. Oh, also, some new functions, like extending only one vertex instead of the whole edge and stuff like that. It's easy to control and move everything without having to change between selection modes, so for quick tweaks this is great. Combine this with snapping and you have a low poly landscape right here. Terminating the terminator effect. Finally, I don't have to have millions of polygons. It was time for this to be updated. Cycles with small light sources like a daylight sun was creating very harsh edges despite you setting the thing on fire, I mean setting the object shading smooth. This was especially true for strong bump on normal maps. Now this is terminated. Very useful. Hmm, impressive with such a low poly count. We still see a nice looking shading. Intel did no laser node. 
This node is awesome. I've been using this in Blender 2.8 1 Alpha and Beta and it did wonders to many interiors. This is self-explanatory, you just need some additional passes and it will create noise-free pictures with a low number of samples. Here is an extreme example. I mean it might look like a painting but better than a noisy mess, isn't it? For the video I didn't use additional passes and it already did a good job denoising this weird composition so that's a big pro. These were the top 10 features I liked, I ignored the grease pencil improvements because I personally never used grease pencil, but there were a lot of new functions added, so if you are animating in 2D with a grease pencil, check out Blender's website on the new functions. See you guys, if you turn on notifications that's good, if you donate me on CG3D as well, like Patreon that's good, if you say bye now that's good, also good.